Hello everyone and today we are talking about Strongyloides stercoralis and uh, the hookworm Nicator americanus. So these two are um, um, common uh, nematodes that have filariform larvae that can penetrate the skin that forms after uh, the rhabditiform larvae which are free uh, living um, larvae and they're able to uh, turn into the infective filariform larvae which penetrate the skin and then they migrate in the body and they go to the intestine where the adult female is going to deposit her eggs in the intestinal mucosa and then the rhabditiform larvae will hatch out and migrate to the intestinal lumen um, you would then have uh, the development of um, free living adult worms that can produce eggs and uh, the male will fertilize the uh, female's eggs then the larvae would hatch uh, from there and you start the cycle all over again there is the possibility of auto infection as well so those eggs that were insisted into the intestinal mycosa uh, mucosa i mean um, may uh, become auto infective because the rhabditiform larvae in the large intestine become filariform larvae they penetrate the intestinal mucosa uh, or the perianal skin and they migrate to other organs and then we have the whole process start all over again uh, so we have um, the possibility of animals like dogs being a definitive host as well um, this is uh, the larvae of the Strongyloides stercoralis. And in order for you to be prepared with uh, what it is you're looking for, I'm going to make sure to put Nicator americanus on here as well, which is a hookworm. And that way you can see the difference. So right now we are on 10. I have zoomed in with my phone, uh, but this is what it looks like. So I've got two little beauties here, one down at the bottom that's sticking its tail out like, hey, I'm here. Uh, but we're going to do this one because it fits right into a beautiful line of sight on my phone. Now, um, it's not uh, it's not that they just stay in this one um, in this one type of motion. Obviously, uh, you know they move all over the place. This is from a formalin fixed specimen, so these guys are not going to move at all. It is a wet prep. I did add iodine, so that's why you get this beautiful yellowy orange look here. And you've got uh, the main event here is looking at the buccal cavity. So for the strongyloides, so this is down here, basically the mouth, okay? So it's much, much smaller. It's got a short buccal cavity. Uh, if you want to um, say it's kind of like lips. Um, and it's much shorter than you would see with a hookworm. And I only have one hookworm uh, with me. So that's why we're going to do a Nicator americanus. And then over about here, there's a little bit of a clearing. I'm not sure if you really can see that very well. But there's the genital primordium. And uh, it's much larger in the um, rhabditiform larvae than the... Um, than in the hookworm. So those are the two things that you're going to look at. We're going to follow along uh, the whole length of this um, this larvae. Okay, so notice I am zooming in and out, uh, changing the plane so that you can see it better. So we start at the buccal cavity. It goes back into the intestines. And then we've got that genital primordium around here. We're following the intestines across, going the length of the worm, and then coming out the tail. So this beautiful pointed tail down here. Okay? So uh, that's what it looks like. That was the best one out of all of them. Let's go ahead and we can look at some others just to show you this guy I already looked at and he was his mouth was completely 
um, his face was folded uh, back in on itself so you can really see so this is this is again on 10 we had some great ones over here too a lot of fun in this specimen I'll tell you all right so we're gonna move to 40 again right smack dab in the middle of it all right so class is this the head or the tail right here if you said the head that is incorrect um, you know this by the pointing of the tail down here. Okay, so let's take a closer look. All right, so no buccal cavity there, right? This is, this is the tip of the tail. All right, so let's go up higher. Genital primordium is about right here. It might be a little closer, it might be around there. Oh, right there. And then we've got the the head up here. Yay! So for those of you who said the tail, you did a great job. And those of you who didn't say the tail, that was fine too. Um, you're learning. Okay, so here we've got the little tiny, you can almost hardly even see the little, the little mouth there. So cute. Okay, so you see the little the little indent down there it goes down into the esophagus right there and then we'll turn into the intestine okay how fun all right so let's go ahead zoom out a little bit geez okay let's pull put on the hookworm okay so <laughs> this is the specimen with nicaramanic Americanus in it, and uh, it's very, very trashy. So again, all of these were from fecal concentration stools. I'm on 10 right now. I'm scanning the area, trying to find a beautiful rhabditiform larvae for you. So we'll keep on looking. I did use iodine again, just to try to make things beautiful and easy to be seen. Looks like a lot of, let's see. Okay, let's zoom in here. Okay. So what we're looking at here, does that look like a worm? And the class said no. <laughs> uh, yes, this is not a worm. Uh, this is uh, possibly plant material. Uh, can't see the internal structure very well. Might be a hair. More like plant material though. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking for a shape, not even like this, right? That looks like possibly more uh, something else, kind of like the shaft of a, <clears throat> uh, some type of vegetation. We are on the outside there. This is a wet prep, so things may move. You saw the outside of the wet prep, another piece of food. And goodness gracious. Okay, I'm going to continue to look so I don't waste your time. Um, and then I will uh, bring it back on, ooh, back online. Let's see what this is before I do that. Oh my goodness. Where did you go? Let's go back. What is that? Uh, doesn't look like anything. Okay, I'm gonna um, get back to you in just a second. Well, I have not found anything. I even made a different slide. Um, 
I thought we were going to find some rhabdoform larvae and maybe even some hookworm eggs, but all I found was this hair. <laughs> so let's take a look at this hair because it's really neat. All right, so see the, um, it's all frayed down here. Somebody has some split ends. Either that or um, since I don't see an inside shaft, that may be some type of plant hair, but this gets really cool if you start looking up here. So if we keep on going up, you see the shaft now, but it's not even, look at that. It's almost like septations in arthroconidia. It's pretty cool. And then it snapped there and then it goes all the way down here. But this is the coolest thing I've seen so far. I cannot seem to find um, a really nice egg that even looks like what you would expect to see where you have that space in between Dave Matthews band, haha. Um, the space in between the, the outer edge of the shell and then the developing larvae inside. I cannot seem to find one. Uh, for you and I can't seem to find a larvae but I sure as heck found that neat cool hair thingy um, so I'm gonna call that the end of the video because unfortunately I mean like we're on 40 right now and it's it's a nicer slide but I don't really see anything it's really disappointing and I'm sorry um, you know you might think that looks like an egg but it's not you know, it doesn't have that typical hookworm look to it. You can't even see anything inside of it. Hmm. That's the closest look I have to an egg. And that doesn't really even look like an egg either. Because there should be a space in between the outer shell and the developing worm inside it's the right shape uh it just doesn't have that that look to it unfortunately ay, ay, ay. well i'm sorry that i couldn't find anything good for you all today because i really did want to show the difference between uh those two larvae so I'll describe it instead. How about that? That'll be a great idea. Okay, so the, the difference is that the rhabditiform larvae of the hookworm has a longer buccal cavity and a shorter, smaller, tinier uh, genital primordium. So it's much, much smaller. Uh, so it's the exact opposite of the rhabditiform larvae of the strongoloides. So, oh, no, nope, not an egg. Darn. <laughs> I really did try. I really, really did. I'll look a little bit more, but that should be it. This is the closest I can get of what it looks like to have the hookworm egg, but there's a, a membrane that goes around it that you should be able to see around the entire bit so this is the best I can do because there's not really one in here um, but there it almost makes it look like there's a halo and it's got this brown area in here that looks like this essentially um, as it's dividing and developing so <clears throat> that's it for this video if you like this video please like and subscribe uh, to find more uh, great wonderful medical laboratory um, videos and uh, different different pieces of information hopefully to help you study uh, and get ready for the field. I'm going to look at this one real quick. I don't think that's it either. Nope. see a lot of ones that look like that. Um, please make sure your notifications are set so that if there is a new video that you'll see it come out and be one of the first to watch it. Alright, I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day.